Thank you so much, Vince. And I have to say that this is a challenging day to try and wrap up. So I think I had a, a big assignment, um, and I will do my best. Um, I think in reflecting across sort of from the morning with Van Jones until now, I'm, it's a little cliche, but I feel like it's the best of times and it's the worst of times. It, I was struck by the dichotomies that we were hearing about. The stakes are high. We heard multiple times the future of democracy is on the line. Um, so the good news is we heard it was a time of abundance, that nothing is stopping us from having a green and inclusive society. We have access to all the published work of humankind. That's a lot of collective wisdom. Uh, we're building a common vocabulary of words. Uh, there's a new way of working with the power of networks and opportunity for creativity and so many new technology tools. So much to be optimistic about. And yet at the same time, the challenges are great. We have racial and cultural differences that are leading to hatred and division. Uh, there's an absence of transparency. We have issues with privacy. Trust is at stake. How can we get it? How can we keep it? There's a risk of an Orwellian permanent presence. I mean, if that doesn't give you shivers, I don't know what does. And nothing, of course, is black and white. So we've got breakdowns, bad, leading to breakthroughs, good. We've got differences in diversity, also leading to stronger teams and better products. We thought meritocracy was great, but it turns out it's actually a myth. 90% of our brains are beyond our own conscious control. So, and even as, as Jess pointed out at, um, earlier, n the new tools are full of pitfalls as well as potential. So how do we think about this? What does it tell us about philanthropy in the digital future? Um, I am struck by the importance of having an opposable mind <laughs> to be able to do the integrative kind of thinking that enables you to hold both realities and seek to find the answer in, in that integration and not to sort of pick one point of view or the other. We have our work cut out for us, but I can't imagine a better group or a better time to tackle it than this group and now. Uh, the conversations we started today have the potential to design the democracy that matches our values. That's pretty exciting. Um, so let's get to it. And I have a parting thought that was really reinforced by our panel and the conversation we just had that I felt was missing earlier in the day and was excited to bring forward the primacy of story and the importance of humor. All the tools and the strategies, no matter how brilliant, are going to fall flat without a compelling story. And nothing is better at reaching those who disagree with us or maybe are just not sort of in the same mental space than humor. Even uh, the terrorist son talked about, you know, John Stewart serving as a surrogate father for him and helping him see how he, the lessons his, his real father was one of the, the World Trade Center bombers in the early 90s, that those lessons were not the lessons he wanted and that humor and John Stewart co continuously pointing out sort of the reality of the world made him something of a father figure. If, if humor can do that, imagine what humor can do for us. And we saw great examples of that today. Um, so story and humor. And one last quote from Harold Goddard, who is a beloved literary professor at Swarthmore, not my alma mater, but great guy. The destiny of the world is determined less by the battles that are lost in one than by the stories it loves and believes in. So let's head outside and get to work. Thank you. Thank you.